Hi guys and welcome to STFX Studios. I've got a very interesting tutorial for you today. Um, I'm going to show you how to create a HDRI image to light a 3D scene. Uh, for that you're going to need a few things. Um, you're going to need a light probe which is just a mirrored sphere. Um, you can get these from a few places. Um, but I got mine from uh, a garden shop and they're called gazing globes or garden globes. Uh, they they do the job. Uh, they have a few like imperfections on the surface, but as I said, for the price, they do what you need. You're also going to need uh, a couple of tripods, one for your camera to keep it still at all times, and one to have the globe on it. You're also going to need a camera that you can change the exposure on, so you can get the lighting information in the shadows and the highlights. There are a couple of ways to make HDRI, but uh, I'm going to show you this way because I feel it's the easiest and quickest to do. The software packages I'm going to use are Photoshop and HDR Shop. Before we can begin creating the HDRI, we need at least three photos uh, with the light probe and the camera in exactly the same position for all of them. Um, you want to be as far away from the light probe as you can and zoomed in as much as possible to keep as high a resolution as you can get. Um, you want it, the three photos to be all at different exposures, one at a low exposure, one at a mid exposure, one at a high exposure. And that's how you can capture the information in the highlights and the shadows. You also want the camera to be level with the light probe when you're taking the photos. Um, the reason you want to be far away is just so you can paint yourself out easier later on. I've chosen to use five so I can get a more varied range of exposure information. And when we finish the whole process, we should end up with something that looks a bit like this. As I said before, this isn't the only way to make HDRI. Um, uh, you can actually have like your camera locked off and take uh, many pictures and then stitch them together. Um, which takes a lot longer, but you'll get a lot higher resolution uh, HDRI. But anyway, let's let's crack on. Um, so in in Photoshop, you go File, Automate, uh, Merge to HDR Pro, and then you'll get this little window here, and you go Browse, and you find your photographs, select them all, and go OK, and then it'll bring them all into here, and then you press OK. And then it will start working out and trying to align everything automatically for you. In case you nudge your camera at all whilst you were taking the photographs. Right, so this is what you should end up with. Um, I've just skipped ahead of it, uh, so you could skip the middle bit, because it can take quite a while. Um, so it kind of tries to work out what exposures uh, each of the images were at. Uh, so it won't always be right. And you can choose uh, what kind of mode you want your image to be, so we want 32 bits, we want to have uh, as much information there as possible. Um, and then we press OK, and it will create it for you. Right, and here we are. Right, and for it be, to be able to use this in um, a 3D package, uh, it actually needs to be unwrapped in a flat image so it can be wrapped around another sphere. Um, so for, for us to do that, we actually need to have it uh, as a square before we can unwrap it. So we just need to crop the image down and get it as close as possible to the square. Let's just check the canvas size. Yeah, pixels. So we need to put the width down a bit. It looks like we've got a bit of a gap here, so we'll take it from that side. that's pretty close. <coughs> so now we want to save this out just, just so you can see, you can check the mode and it's 32 bits per channel. And we'll save it out and we want to choose uh, where is it? HDR there.
to say that. Then we'll move over to HDR shop. And we'll go file, open. And we'll go to our file there. And then it'll open up there. Uh, so to unwrap it, we need to go on to image, panorama and panoramic transformations. Um, and then, so it tells you what it currently is there. So it's currently a mirrored ball. And we want to change it to um, uh, latitude and longitude. And that'll basically make uh, the width twice the height. And so we can get the highest resolution, we'll just match the width to what the actual width was. So which is 1968. Okay. So that'll have unwra that's unwrapped it for us, and we'll just save that out as, and we'll call it field. Unwrapped. That took some while. Uh, tumbled over my keyboard. <laughs> Let me save that. Okay, so that's that bit done with. Then we can open that back up in here. And that's what it's done for us. So as you can see, um, it's still got me in it taking the picture. It's got a big shadow from the tripod from where the sun was casting the shadow. And you've actually got the tripod that the ball is on as well. And we've got a bit of a splodge on the from uh, like a mark on this sphere. Um, so what you can go ahead and do now is, uh, using the clone stamps, we'll actually paint all these kind of imperfections out. And uh, a little trick for painting out the pinch over here is if you use the offset filter here so you go filter other offset and then you can offset it and then we can then get at this a bit easier and paint it out see so, uh, so depending on um, whether you're going to be using these for Reflections depends on how neat you actually need this. If you use it for the lighting, then you don't really need to be so kind of like detailed with what you're painting out. And since I'm just demonstrating for you guys, I'm just gonna roughly paint things out so you get an idea. So that's me gone. Alright, so I'm just going to skip ahead to um, when it's finished and then I'll rejoin you back once I've painted it all out. Right, I've just got to the point where I'm going to paint out the pinch. Um, there's not really a great deal you can do here, so you're just going to have kind of to make up what was there. You can probably add a tree from somewhere else. There, so that, that was after I applied the offset filter. So if I add that back down again, that should be where we were at. And that's it. So when you're saving it out, you just go save as again, and you can choose HDR. I think EXRs work as well, so you can use either of them uh, to create your HDR to light your scene. So if you've got any questions, queries or requests, uh, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. And if you're not already there, make sure you check out sdfxstudios.com uh, where you can find lots more tips and tutorials and have a look at some of the projects I'm currently working on. Well, that's it for now. I'm Sam Taylor and thanks for watching.